Cheers. see their club return to their old ground at the Valley. The party is fielding no less than 60 candidates in Greenwich in the forthcoming local elections. Duncan Kennedy reports. Well, um, first of all, thanks everybody for coming down to the Valley, home of Champlain Athletic. As a party launch, it was like any other. There were the candidates, the posters, even the manifesto. This, though, is a one-issue party. The aim to get football back to the valley, home of Charlton Athletic. Claims the whole thing is a stunt are quickly rejected. It started off as something uh, of a stunt, from our point of view, in order to keep publicity uh, going on, on the issue. But we now feel, having talked to local people about it, that it's, it's much more than that now. Uh, we are serious about the issue. People in the borough feel that it is a serious issue, and therefore it is something that ought to be presented seriously to the people to vote on. Economics forced Charlton out of the valley in 1985, and they now share a ground with Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park. But Charlton supporters have never been happy, included among them a star forward of the 30s and 40s. I've played here, and there's been gates of 70, 72,000, because that's all gone. But I'm certain that if they came back here again, everything would improve. Nostalgia is the key message being used in the Valley Party's campaign, a campaign masterminded by the same advertising agency that tried to save the GLC. That mission failed, and the chances of the Valley Party winning seats, at least according to some local residents, are slim. Um, I think maybe it's carrying it a bit too far. I agree with their support. That's lovely, but I don't know whether I would support the party. It was terrific when I was here before. I even worked in all the bars over there. But would you vote for them? I don't think so. The Valley Party aims to contest 60 out of 62 seats. It has the backing of the club, who are themselves in conflict with Greenwich Council over plans to develop part of the ground. No official from Greenwich Council was available to comment publicly today on the launch of the new party. The authorities' position, though, is that they have no objection to football returning to the Valley. What they do object to are plans by the club to develop the ground, to include offices and leisure facilities. Political parties based solely on football are probably unique, and with the poll tax uppermost in most people's minds, backing the Valley Party is likely to be a test of loyalty even for the most ardent of supporters when the local elections come round in May. Now with more thought... Whether or not you're interested in politics, you won't fail to see the poster campaign in Greenwich. Between now and polling day on May the 3rd, the Valley Party's one-point manifesto will be made quite clear. They'll be contesting all 36 wards with a candidate in 60 of the 62 seats. Success, they say, will be measured by sympathy rather than votes, but they still expect to get some members onto the council. Why should people vote for it? Well, we feel it's, a, it's an issue that uh, we want to get back to the valley. We feel it's our home, not in some sort of dinosaur or shared ground over in Sellers Park. We want to get down here, we want to get playing back where Charlton belongs. When Greenwich Council turned down the club's plans for a modern stadium at the Valley, the fans decided to fight the decision in the ballot box. Their money has come from the supporters and the sympathetic advertising agency. The other ingredient in their lineup is passion. The big launch today, but not a great turnout, it must be said. I, I appreciate that. I think there's obviously a possibility that uh, there are certain members of the media who haven't taken us seriously yet. I think once they see the strength of our campaign and the professional slick campaign that we have formulated, I think people will take us seriously. I think we will win votes. I think we may even win a few seats. I think the Labour Party, the Conservative Party, and in fact the electors of this borough will take us seriously from now on. Everyone's agreed that there have never been local polls where the fallout nationally could be greater. In the big party battle, I doubt whether you'll hear a more bitter thrust at the opposition than this. I just hope that on May the 3rd that uh, all those people that have made us suffer uh, will actually get voted out. That was the observation not of a party politician, but a football club chairman. In one borough election, football has become an issue. Marcus Powell reports. He was actually about a local political issue. It's something that... In central London, the creative team from one of the country's top advertising agencies are plotting their latest campaign. Staff here used to help the Labour Party, but some have changed sides. We've got an excellent campaign there in the great 
be well, in the position of uh, issue advertising. Mm. It's, it's probably a, a, a bigger campaign than, than, than the major political parties could manage in normal circumstances. Yeah. So if you were to picture when I was young... They're discussing the politics of football. Agency director Richard Hunt is an avid Charlton Athletic fan, campaigning to put the club top of the local political agenda. Yeah, I mean, I think they stand up against uh, any other political advertising. You know, they're, they're strong, they're bold, and uh, hopefully they'll get people to vote Valley. Their message, Vote Valley, has been plastered throughout Greenwich, a political salvo aimed at the local Labour Council. Charlton fans became politicians when the council threw out their plans to return to their home ground at the Valley. The Valley Party was formed by supporters in exile at Crystal Palace's Selhurst Park in distant Croydon. They'll put up 60 candidates in the local elections on Thursday, making them by far the biggest opposition party to challenge the Labour stronghold in Greenwich. Their single manifesto pledge to get Charlton back to the Valley. I think a great many people in Greenwich and elsewhere are very angry with the council um, because they gave this undertaking that they would support the club coming back and they've broken it. Um, that's why there is a valley party in the elections. At their peak in the 40s, long before Charlton became a political football, the valley was filled by 70,000 spectators, the biggest crowds in the country. But fortunes faded. Financial crisis overtook the club. Survival meant more than just scoring goals. There were protests five years ago after the last Valley match. The fans didn't want to move to Selhurst Park. They could only take souvenirs. Their Valley ground was closed for safety reasons. It remains derelict and deserted today still awaiting the club's return. The porter cabins at Crystal Palace offer Charlton a temporary but unpopular home. The new Charlton directors have been campaigning to get the club back to the valley. They dream of a new all-seater stadium with offices and a banqueting suite. It's a multi-million pound plan to be financed by building houses on the back of the site. Greenwich Council was told of the plans to build houses and raised no objections. So, at a public meeting a year ago, the club chairman, Roger Alwyn, announced a return to the valley. Supporters who'd waited five years for the news were overjoyed. The council leader, Dave Picton, backed the plan. Charlton has a great past, and I think it's now got a great future. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that when the formal processes have been gone through, that future is going to be back at the valley. Charlton supporters seem to have achieved their goal. But unknown to them, Greenwich planners later put the finishing touches to a new borough plan. This blueprint prevented commercial development at the valley. Buildings will only be permitted where they are ancillary to the existing land uses. So at a planning meeting in January, the club's development scheme was thrown out and the political battle began. Do you think you've been betrayed by the council? Oh, certainly. Certainly. I mean, since within a very short time, Councillor Picton was no longer the leader, the borough plan had changed, and it's been a fight ever since. So the Valley Party entered the political arena. Candidates like Kevin Fox are campaigning, hoping the council's U-turn will rebound on them at the election. Good morning. My name's Kevin Fox. I represent the Valley Party. If I could get your support, then I'll promise you honesty and a bit of fairness in the council. I can't say more than that. Can I get your support? I'm sorry, I'm going to vote some, uh, for a proper political party. Which is? Who? Uh, probably the Labour Party. I'm sorry. Really? Yeah. Labour look like I'm certain sorry, winners in Greenwich, but they've created passionate opponents. I'm not really a political animal. I didn't want to get involved in politics. But the more I look into this council and I see what's happening, the more involved I'm becoming. I'm certainly very concerned about the way the council behaves. I think their decision at the moment has been unjust, unfair and undemocratic. And uh, I want to change things. 
<laughs> the Labour old guard are confident nothing will change and they'll increase their grip on the council. Other mainstream opposition parties aren't contesting many of the seats, so the Valley Party have become more of an issue on the doorstep. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Bennett. I'm Bob Callan and this is Quentin Marsh from the Labour yeah. Party and we're at Campton uh, for local council elections on May the 3rd and we're asking you if, if we can count on your support on May the 3rd. Well, I was thinking about the, um, what about the Valley Party. About the Valley Party? Yeah. I've supported Charlton and I'd like to see him come back to Well, yeah. uh, so would we. So would we. I mean, um, I actually did su support them on the night. I was one of the two. Um, and I know Quentin I'm would like to see him back here. here. And I was brought up with Charlton yeah. playing at the Valley. Labour say they support Charlton, but the Valley Party is a different ball game. Clearly they're in the business of getting their message across, not of actually winning seats running a council, because nowhere do they talk about the programme that they have to run a council, to cope with poll tax capping, to cope with the provision of services, to cope with other parts of the borough than just the area around the Valley football ground. In Greenwich Town Hall, councillors have been accused of using dirty tricks to block Charlton's return to the Valley. Council officers have been caught in the crossfire and also criticised for being anti-football. The chief planning officer, Sandra Hunt, has reacted to those sort of remarks, threatening libel writs against the Charlton chairman, Roger Alwyn, the supporters' magazine editor, Rick Everett, and the local paper, The Mercury. Also caught in the crossfire is another planning officer, David Hyam. He wasn't involved in vetting the Valley application, but has told the council of his interest as a resident Mr. Hyam played a leading part in campaigning against Charlton's return. He was involved in producing a leaflet. It spoke of speculative offices, the noise and nuisance likely to be caused. It called the club's ideas crazy. Supporters are generally critical of council officers. I think the part played by people within the planning department and the planning department in general is quite extraordinary. If somebody lives in a local area, it is quite legitimate for them to wish to express their own view about an application about the way their life is being changed in their view. Many residents share the view that Charlton's plans would bring too much development to a congested area. I mean, the area is surrounded by housing on all four sides, very similar to a lot of London clubs, but the scale of what they're proposing is totally out of order. Well, to to a big new stand here would include an office block but it's not just the commercial development they're opposed to. Well, I'm worried about the hooligan element because we were told chance supporters were not hooligans and I was in two minds until I went to the public meeting and I, I, I was astounded by their behaviour. We were spat at, we were threatened uh, with uh, physical violence outside. We had to be escorted out of the building by the police because of the behaviour of Charlton fans. People around here don't want football back and don't want the development back. And what they're concerned about is the emotion that's been tied up with this and the loss of perspective with the Valley Party's emergence. The council can turn down an all-seater stadium. Mm. What next will they turn That's right. With everyone complaining, the ballot box may be the best way to sort things out before Charlton appeal against the council's decision. Charlton may not win the cup again, but they have a chance on Thursday of scoring against those who blocked their return to the Valley. Isn't it true that everything the clubs say they need to make football financially viable at the Valley, you will in fact turn down on planning grounds? Not at all. So, what will you allow? We will accept a planning application that fits in with our policies. Which and allows it's virtually no commercial development. <clears throat> On that particular site, there is an indication in the borough plan that 5,000 square foot is the acceptable office development. But the council know that wouldn't make football pay. I don't think they have any intention of letting us play football there again. Or they will do everything they possibly can to stop us. So, the war of words goes on. Now that they take us seriously and see that we can do joined up handwriting and can get our applications in successfully, and now they've seen that we can actually run a campaign which can actually beat the pants off them in terms of professionalism, they now seem to be indignant that we are intruding in some kind of private game called party politics and that we as ordinary people have no right to interfere in this private game. 
This is yet another game that Charlton really need to win. All the election results, including doubtless the number of votes won by the Valley Party, will be on a Thames News election special starting...